Hey guys, this is a screencast about z-scores, and what z-scores tell you is how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. Oops, let's write it down right. Okay, so z-scores. How many standard deviations from mean a score is. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple of examples, but before we do, here's the formula we're going to be using. So it's z-score equals, and then this is your data point, minus the mean over the standard deviation. Sometimes people use different notation for the mean. They use a symbol called mu instead of x bar, and they use sigma instead of standard deviation or sample standard deviation, but that means the same thing. So pause that and copy it if you're taking notes. All right, so let's start with a basic problem where we're just going to compare two people. So we're going to say that Alex took a test. So here's Alex's scenario. The mean on the test was a 75, and the standard deviation was a 9.2, and his score was a 90. Meanwhile, Jim also took a test, and the mean on that test, so like it was in a different class, was an 80. Sorry, that looks like an 86. Um, the standard deviation was 11.5, and his score was a 91. So who did better? At first glance, it looks like Jim did better, um, but z-scores will tell us. So we're going to use our z-score formula here, and we're going to say Alex's score minus the mean over the standard deviation. And when we work that out, we get a 1.63. For Jim, if we use the formula, we're going to go 91 minus 80 over 11.5. And when we work that out, we get a 0 0.96. So what that means is that um, Alex did better because his score is 1.63 standard deviations above the mean, and Jim's is only 0.96. Notice that if we got a negative answer on either of these, that would mean that their score was below the mean. Okay. All right, so that's a basic example of how you can just use z-scores to compare two things. Okay, now we're going to use... Um, do a more complicated example where we have to use what's called a z-table. Okay, so let's consider um, a situation where the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 5. And our question is asking if um, what percentage, so what percentage of data is below a 12.5. Okay, so if you can picture the normal curve, here's 10 right here, here's 15, which is one standard deviation above the mean, and 12.5 would fall right between them. So we can't use the empirical rule because that only works um, when your data point falls right on a standard deviation from the mean. So basically we want to know this area right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what's the z-score for 12.5. Okay, so we're going to go 12.5 minus 10 over 5, and we're going to get 0.5. Now the next thing you want to do is look that up in the table. 
So in the table, you can see here is 0 0.5, and the next decimals after that are 0 and 0. Um, so I'm going to use this value here, 0.1915. And at the top, you can see how this works. What it's telling you is that there's basically 19% of the data is between the mean right here and this data point that we have. Okay, so in the Z table, we got 0 0.1915. So basically, that's this portion right here. Now, since we're above the mean, we still have to add this part right here, which is 0 0.5. So to this number, I'm going to add 0 0.5. So I get a total of 0 0.5. 6915. So that means 69.15% of the data is below 12.5. Okay, let's consider uh, the same mean and standard deviation, but this time we're saying what percentage of data is above 8. Notice that 8 is below the standard deviation, so we're going to see what that looks like. Let's picture the normal curve. Here's 10, and the next standard deviation below 10 is 5, so 8 is about right here, and, okay, sorry about that, my, my video cast wasn't recording for a second. Okay, so here's where your 8 would be, which is below the mean, and it, we're asked what percentage exceeds 8. So the first thing we're going to do is find the z-score for 8, which is going to be negative 0 0.4. It's negative because it's below the mean. Okay, now we're going to go look up what negative 0.4 is in the z-table. Now we can't find negative 0.4 in the z-table. We'll find 0.4, and again, this is telling us that um, 15% of the data is right here, um, which is above the mean, but remember it's symmetrical, so that's the same amount right here um, at 0.4 below the mean. So the Z value is 0 0.1554. So this tells us that um, this area right here between 8 and the mean is 0.554, so we still have to add this part, which is 0 0.5, so plus 0 0.5. So that means that 65.54% of the data is greater than 8. If this problem had been a little bit different and um, we were asked instead, what percentage of data is below? So change that to below 8. Let's consider how things would be different. Okay, we'd still have our 10, and here would be 8 right there. And um, the Z value, the Z table would have still given you this part right here, um, except for what we really want is this section, because this is the area below 8. So knowing that this whole bottom half is 50%, in this case we'd go 0.5 minus 0 0.1554. And throw that in the calculator. We would get 0 0.3446, which makes sense because if you added that to 65.54, you would get um, 100%. Okay, last example, um, we're going to talk about finding the percentage of data between two values. So let's consider our bell curve again. Here is my mean, and we're asked about the percentage of data between 6 and 11. So we're looking for the area right here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually deal with this as two separate parts. We're going to find this area, and then we're going to find this area, and we're just going to add them together. Okay, so let's start with um, 
this red area, which corresponds to the value of 11. So we're going to find the z-score for 11. is 0 0.2. Then we go look it up in the table. Oops. Okay, so 0 0.2 is right here, and we still don't have any decimal places. By the way, if it was 0 0.25, this would be the number that I'd pick, or 0 0.26 or 27. So this, this up here tells you about the second place. Um, all right, so 0 0.2 is 0 0.0793. So from the Z table, 0 0.0793. Okay, and now we're going to do the orange area. So using this 6. So 6 minus 10 over 5. And we get negative 0 0.8 against negative because it's below the mean. Okay, so looking up uh, 0 0.8, it's right here, and we're going to use 0 0.2881. Okay, and now I just need to add those two areas together. So 0 0.2881 plus 0 0.0793 equals. Okay, now we got lucky in this example because um, the data points were on either side of the mean. If we had a situation where, let's say I was asked for the percentage between two data points that were both above the mean or even both below the mean, you'd treat it in the same way. So, for example, um, if I was doing, here's my normal curve and here's my mean right here. If I was asked for the percentage of data between 11 and 13, so I want this. I would do the same thing, except for instead of adding the two areas, I would subtract them. And the reason is that when I look up 11 in the z-score table, I'm going to get this area. And when I look up 13, I'm going to get this whole area. So I want to take the blue and minus the green to get the red. Okay, I hope that helps you out and just watch it again if you need to and definitely take notes if you need to.